Today, cadets, we continue with our class on the benefits of physical activity. And what this is really all about is many of you are at various levels of physical fitness. Uh, some of you are in, in great physical shape. Some of you uh, need to start w working towards a more physical life, less sedentary lifestyle. And what I want to do is, is really, when you're young, as a teenager, set those good habits in place that you take with you through life. So the, the more you are physically fit now, the more you're going to be physically fit later in life. And the benefits are way, way outweigh not being physically fit. We talked about that in our last presentation. You know, from being less stressful, overall just feeling good about yourself, the benefits of physical activity are tremendous. And the more you do it, the better you feel about yourself. So a little bit about, you know, depending on where you are, you may have, you know, great physical fitness. But we all can set goals and, and try to improve. And that's what we're going to talk about today. All right. The big thing is setting fitness goals is using SMART goals. And that's not just in physical fitness. When we talk about setting goals, we always say make SMART goals goals uh, and it comes right over into the fitness be specific in this example here be able to run three miles you know you wouldn't want to say I want to run faster that's not a good goal that's not setting towards a specific target the more specific you are the more likely you're going to be shooting towards that target so be able to run three miles that's specific make it measurable you know you be able to log it yeah make it attainable uh, something like you're not going to sit there and say, I want to run a the New York City Marathon by December if you haven't started running. That's not attainable. It's, you know, So it's got to be attainable and realistic. you got to be able to track the results you know, over a period of time. If you want to be able to run three miles, you're going to see the results say, okay, I want to be able to run one mile by this time, two miles by this time, whatever it may be. And then that comes down to a time frame. You want to have it all tied into a certain amount of time that you want to accomplish that goal. So we're going to talk about a little bit more about that because that is a sheet that you all are going to be doing uh, as an assignment today. Setting some fitness SMART goals. Everyone has the ability to do that. Okay, determine which exercise will help you reach your goals. Remember in our last instruction, we talked about muscle strength, cardio, we talked about endurance, all those sort of things. So you got to choose the right exercise that's going to help you achieve your goals. I mean, obviously, if you're going to try to be running three miles, uh, if your exercise is a whole lot of weight training in there, well, that's going to have low heart strength and endurance, which you need for running. So that would not be the top exercise that you'd be choosing. But, like we said, you got to embrace a well-rounded um, exercise schedule. So you would have that in there, but you'd probably be more working on the running, you know, and, and the high heart strength and endurance type exercises. All right. We'll talk a little bit about creating your activity plan. I mean... In order to go forward with your SMART goal, once we make those SMART goals, we got to come up with a plan as to how it's going to happen. If you just make a, a goals and you don't put a plan in place, uh, it, it's not going to happen. So you got to have a plan. How am I going to achieve this goal of running three miles, for example? Uh, you know, you can... If you just sit there and say, I'm going to run three miles, but you don't put a plan in place, it's just not going to happen. You're not going to achieve your goals. So you've got to have something that says, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, third, you know, this is how I'm going to do it. These are the activities I'm going to do in order to achieve my fitness goals. And we'll talk about that also as a sheet that we're going to put together. So we got right there, there's two worksheets that we're going to be doing in this class today, but I think they're, they're good. Um, you know, writing it down so that you, as you're moving along, you want to go ahead and be able to 
write it down. Okay, this is what I did on Monday. This is what I did on Tuesday. And you can go back and look to see if you're really moving forward towards your goals. I mean, if you write it down and, you should, and you're able to go back and look, if you're not achieving your goal, you can go back and look at it and say, okay, what do I need to change? What, what can I modify in order to meet my fitness goal? Okay, and that's what we kind of talked about, keeping an exercise log, making your notes. And here's something. you got to be patient. Whenever you take on some sort of exercise goals or something, it, it takes a while. It's not going to happen quickly. You'll start noticing difference after four to six weeks. It's a very gradual process of getting, you know, into shape. When I was a cadet in college, I wanted to be able to, you know, get up my push-ups. I wanted to be able to max the PT test back then, which was 78 push-ups in two minutes. And I started probably down in the 40s. And, you know, but... Over time, it took months for me to really get to that point, but I I could see that I was moving forward. I could track my progress. I knew I was getting better, and eventually I did reach that goal. I was able to max my push-ups. So, okay. Sorry about that. And then down there at the bottom, once you reach your goals, it's not over. That last one, set new ones to improve and keep your workouts interesting. So, you, you know, hopefully we reach our goal and then we set another one to keep on improving and getting better. So like I said, when I achieved my push-up goal, my next goal was the sit-ups. I wanted to match the sit-ups and I set a goal towards doing that too. Okay, a written exercise plan will benefit you by keeping you on track and helping you exercise consistently, overload your weekends with exercise, or make friends with others who have the same goals. I think that's obvious. It's going to be A, exercising consistently, right? The best way to continually improve your fitness is by doing extra hard workouts on the weekends, increasing the number of repetitions of the same exercises, or set new goals once you reach your current goals. And that's something we just talked about. It's, hey, set new goals once you reach them. Continuous improvement. Continuously making yourself stronger and better. Tamara set fitness goals two months ago. She's not seen any change in her level of fitness. What should she not do? Not do. Ask herself if she needs to modify her goals. Maybe her goals were set too low. Check her activity log to see if she has been exercising regularly. See if her resting heart rate has changed. Stop working out with her athletic friend Sally. That one's obvious. The thing you wouldn't want to do is stop working out with your athletic friend. And I'm telling you, if you can, I, I'm an advocate of a workout partner, someone that's you know even better than you. Uh, when I was a major, I had a lieutenant colonel that was a special forces guy that was my workout partner. He could run like a gazelle. He could do push-ups and pull-ups nonstop. And he absolutely pushed and smoked me. And it was one of the best physical shape I ever got in. I became an extremely fast runner. Still couldn't catch him. but And my muscle strength and endurance was much stronger because I did a lot of push-ups. So workout partner, keep them. And the more athletic they are, the better. Rob is starting a new exercise program. His, his his resting heart rate is 84. What advice would you give Rob? Rob, you need to improve your aerobic capacity. Rob, you need to do some weight lifting and push-ups. Or Rob, you need to relax and calm down. Okay, so if we've got a heart rate that's kind of high, we're just at the rest, we know A, he needs to improve his aerobic capacity. That's where, you know, we got our heart strengthening and endurance comes from those aerobic activities and 84 is kind of a high resting heart rate before you start exercising so he needs to improve that heart endurance and strength teenagers should engage in muscle and bone strengthening activities for at least how many minutes a day and we kind of talked about 20 30 40 or 60 and answer to that 60 minutes that is the idea. You know, the, like I said, as a teenager, the younger you start 
and getting in shape. And the more you do, it's going to help you as an adult. And, you know, a lot of y'all take advantage of youth and say, well, you know, I'm, I'm okay, I'm physically fit. But if you don't incorporate these healthy habits now, it's going to get harder for you the older you get. So 60 minutes, ideally, for teenagers. All right, let's think about your goals and the obstacles to exercise. Many of y'all come up with excuses, love to come up with excuses. I don't have time. Uh, I don't have the right equipment. I, you know, there's a variety of excuses. So, all right. This is the part you are going to do uh, your fitness goals, that exercise. I'll show it to you real quick. Um, it's your SMART goals. They like said we're gonna, you're gonna do this, and I want you. We're gonna measure this. I want you to come up with a specific goal. Like I said, do not say I want to be physically fit. That's not specific. I want you to say I want to run certain much. I want to be able to, do, like I said, this many push-ups. I want to do score this on the cadet challenge. Those are very specific goals. I want you to be able to do that. You know, they are that are measurable. We already talked about that. You're going to put in there, you know, my, is it attainable? Like you say, you're not going to sit there and say, I want to run if a four-minute mile if you're barely breaking 10. You know, that's just not realistic and attainable. You're going to track your results. You know, how will they be tracked? Weekly, I want to be able to get this, this, this. Or monthly, I want to be able to do it. And the time frame. And I would, I'd like to see you all put a goal for, like, this semester. So by the end of end of the year, you want to accomplish something. And uh, this is going to be, I'm going to look at it, and we're going to come back. Hopefully when we come back at the, uh, if we come back to school, we'll, we'll talk about these. And we'll revisit these goals. Okay? So that is an exercise we will be doing. Okay, we're not going to do the obstacles to exercise. That's actually a pretty good uh, exercise that goes through. And you have to just say, you question whether or not you are, uh, you know, what, what's your obstacles. And what we see here, I'll just go to the last page on that. You know, many of you all lack of time or social influences. You know, your friends don't work out. You, oh, you feel like you have a lack of energy or you just don't have the motivation, the willpower. Some have a fear of injury or they feel that they're just not skilled enough to, to incorporate a fitness program. And that's why we're, we're talking this. Everyone has the skill or you lack of resources. And there, that's, you know, like I say, you don't need resources. You, you all, you've got a backyard. You can push up. you got a the great world to go out and run. There's all sorts of things you can do. So these are the excuses you all use. And we need to avoid that. So, But I'm not going to have you do the exercise, but I wanted to just go through and have you look at that. Okay, so what do you think your biggest obstacle is? It's, it's your challenge. It's not your excuse. So, you know, figure out what your biggest challenge is and then, then overcome it. Because there's no reason for you not to embrace a physical activity you know, of any sort. So, think about creating your personal fitness plan, like we talked about. And I'm not going to do the scheduling activities one, but we will, let me see, do this one. Because, like I said, you got to create your goals, and then you got to come up with, and we are going to do this one. <coughs> Can I put this one in there? No, not that one. Sorry. This one, that was the obstacles. I want you to come up with a plan. What are you going to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? And then this, you know, what time? You know, like at, at 7 a.m. for 15 minutes, I'm going to try to do 125 push-ups, depending on where you are. Some of y'all can do that in one setting. You know, then at noon, you know, during my between my third and fourth periods, uh, I'm going to try to go for a 20-minute run. Uh, and then in the evening, you know, I'm going to do some sort of CrossFit. But the thing is, if you don't write this down, you're never going to achieve those SMART goals. Okay, guys, 
that is what we're going to be doing today. That concludes this class for today. So we'll talk more about it.